Hey, what's good, everybody? It's your boy, Jolly by Nature, and we are back bringing you our chapter seven, chapter seven uh, PvP battles post commentary. It's part of the Blast Bird Radio Nuzlocke World Tour. Uh, I'm real excited for this one. I hope that you are. Um, we have been not not so much on a downward slide in recent weeks as it is that everybody else is just climbing um and so we're we're in a bit of a precarious spot going in pvp this week we really need to pull out uh, really we really need to pull out both wins if we at all possibly can we definitely need to beat annabeth and we are going to do our very very best um and as you can see our first match of this week is up against miss annabeth miss servier herself uh if you haven't watched the um pvp team builder be sure to go back and watch that a lot of a lot of good information there uh hopefully you will get some some value out of that um now you can see the six that we are bringing to this battle on the overlay of course we've got ravioli the garchomp uh, spongebob our new togekiss omelet our heracross optimus are now big boy Bisharp, pumpkin spice our gorgeist and shishimi our Gyarados up against Anna's team, which consists of Boss, her Heracross, uh, Rose, her Roserade, Nuit, her Chansey, Fierce, her Garchomp, um, Samsara, her Delphox, and Echo, her Mega Metacham. Um, I don't feel like we have a terrible matchup heading into this matchup overall, I think. Um, there are definitely some points of concern. Um, I called during the team builder, like specifically, that if we see this particular combination of mana and particularly both the Heracross and the Mega Metacham, that the Heracross was going to be Choice Scarf. Um, there's no no real reason to bring both of those otherwise. Um, I definitely don't think you bring Mega Heracross and non-Mega Metacham. Um, so it's going to be really interesting to see what exactly Annabeth's strategy is here. But we know what our strategy is here, and that is 100% of the time uh, to lead with Optimus, our, our Bisharp. Uh, hopefully we'll get a good lead matchup and we get the opportunity to get Stealth Rocks up, which would be ideal. Though I suppose we shall see how that works out in practice. Uh, Annabeth rocking that fresh fly new fit. You love to see it. And leading out with Samsara, the Delphox, which unfortunately does put us into a disadvantageous position when it comes to getting Stealth Rocks up. Um, so for me here, there's really only... Well, there's a couple of potential plays that I could take, but there, there's one in particular that just to me makes sense here, which is to go ahead and go for Sucker Punch. Um, again, there's all obviously always the possibility that Samsara is going to go for a supporting move here, um, but we don't want to allow it to, to just bop us, certainly. Uh, unfortunately, we have a, a pretty bad first turn here as we go for a Sucker Punch and Samsara goes for Will-O-Wisp, burning our Optimus. Uh, while we do not land any damage, which it, it sucks. You, you hate to see it. And, and you can see here that my knee-jerk reaction immediately is to go ahead and switch, but I decide, you know what? We're not going to do that. Instead, we're going to stay in. We are going to stay in. I believe we're going to go for another Sucker Punch. No, we decide to go ahead and go for Self Rocks. Um, yeah. Um, a good thing that we do, uh, because Miss Annabeth decides to go right into a Calm Mind, uh, trying to play those Sucker Punch mind games with us, but we get the better of that exchange, I think, overall, uh, because that plus one special attack doesn't mean a ton here against Optimus. Like, I'm pretty sure a plus zero flamethrower still would have done the would have done the dang deed. Um, but at this point, Samsara is getting a little scary, and so I have to hope, like, again, this is the, the mind games part uh, of the whole match, right? I have to hope that Annabeth is going to get greedy and she's going to keep going for Call Mines here. Um, and so we just go ahead and go for a Night Slash, uh, which thankfully is a, a boosted crit chance move. If we get a crit here, then we can bypass, obviously, the burn and, and secure an Oko, which would, would be literally ideal. And we do land it. Uh, Annabeth does get greedy. She does go for another Call Mine, but unfortunately, we do not get lucky and land the crit. Um, so we are not able to secure an Oko here. But we do deal really big damage, which is really important. And we go ahead and go for a Sucker Punch here, um, trusting to the fact that Annabeth can no longer be greedy, can no longer uh, sit here in front of me and, and go for Calm Minds. Um, she's going to attack this turn, and we're going to try to try to bop it, or at least come very, very close with the Sucker Punch. And we do connect with the Sucker Punch. And that is enough to take Samsara out. Um, so overall, like, again, not an ideal 
scenario for me, I do now have a burned Optimus, which is not great. Um, but we also got Stealth Rock Step when we took care of the Delphox. So not a not a bad start either by, by any stretch, really. And we do see Boss the Heracross come out for Annabeth. And again, I have to be very careful here because there's a very real chance that this thing is just going to be Choice Scarfed and go for close combat. Even if it's not Choice Scarfed, it will outspeed Optimus. Um, so we can't re really super afford to stay in here. And we do bring Optimus back in favor of, I believe, SpongeBob the Togekiss. Yes, SpongeBob the Togekiss. Here he comes. And he switches into a Rock Blast. Annabeth actually made a, a really, really good read there. Um, and is going to be able to just absolutely demolish your boy, young SpongeBob. Like, he's not dead, but he's not feeling great either. Um, which was a really good read um, overall. Like, a, a really good read. But it does leave me in kind of a rough spot. Um, the obvious play here for me then is to go into Ravioli. Uh, again, I feel reasonably comfortable that that Annabeth is, is scarfed on, on this Heracross, which means that all she's going to be able to hit me with is a, a not very effective Rock Blast. Also, really, really unfortunate that it hit five times into SpongeBob, um, considering that this is a regular ass Heracross. It does not have um, Skill Link. There's four. Yeah, and then it hits four. Or no, it hits five again. It hits five back to back. That's pretty wild. So we're going to go ahead and go for a Dragon Claw here. Um, I don't believe Annabeth actually brought any fairies against me this week. She might have brought one. Um, and I'm misremembering. But either way, I felt pretty safe in this moment. Going for a Dragon Claw. Sorry, guys. It's been a long day already. <laughs> I'm just trying to get this video out for y'all. Um, we do see Rose the Roserade come out. She's going to come out into Stealth Rocks and then into that Dragon Claw, which is going to do a substantial amount of damage. Yeah, that's enough to take Rose out, which is huge. Rose has been so good for Anna all season. Um, so being able to just bop it the turn that it comes out is incredible, frankly. We do see Ego the Mega Medicham come out, which is a, like a capital P problem. And we're going to come back here in favor of Sashimi the Gyarados, which is a really, I think, smart play overall here. We're going to get an Intimidate off on that Mega Metacham. We're going to resist any Fighting Stab that comes out here, even though it's more likely, I think, to be Ice coverage overall when, when Echo was sitting in on... Yeah, on a Garchomp, and sure enough, it is Ice Punch. And even through the Intimidate, it hits for a, a pretty wild amount of damage. Um, but we're going to go ahead and we're going to go ahead and Dragon Dance up here. Because um, theoretically, I should be able to live one of any hit this thing wants to throw out. And a plus one is going to help us deal some like some decent breaking damage after. So that's kind of the, the hope and the goal and the dream in going for a D-Dance here. We do see a high jump kick come out, um, which was a great play for Miss Annabeth. Um, even resisted at minus one, that is going to deal enough extra damage to bring down Sashimi. Um, so great job. Um, if she had gone back to the Ice Punch, which I think in a lot of ways was the, the more logical play, um, we would have lived the hit, we would have got the Dragon Dance off, and we would have done a ton of damage the following turn. Um, but she definitely made the right call there. Um, however, we're going to go ahead and go into Pumpkin Spice. Frisk goes off. We can see it's Meta Stone, Mega Stone. That's very, very helpful considering it's already, you know, Mega Evolved. And Echo's going to go for the Ice Punch again, uh, which makes sense. It's a super effective move. The only super effective option 
The Neko has it, does a fair amount of damage, uh, but we are going to live it pretty handily and get a Will-O-Wisp off, which is gonna burn Echo, which is, is a significant neutering of Miss Annabeth's offensive prowess. And Echo stays in and goes for Poison Jab, which I think is a less wise option overall. It does land the Poison here, which is actually huge because it negates our um, it negates our lefties, although we do get Leech Seed off. Um, but overall, I think that Ice Punch or, or Zen Headbutt, if she has it, um, would have been by far a, a wiser offensive option into this core, guys. Like, I'm not sure what the logic in Poison Jab was, uh, which is a neutral move over Ice Punch, which is super effective. God, excuse me, guys. It's been a long day. Hey, and Echo's going to come back. In favor of Nweet the Chansey, which is okay by me. Switches into a Shadow Sneak, which is not going to do damage. And actually, this is a moment where that, that earlier Poison Jab by Annabeth is really going to do dividends for me because uh, this Chansey wants to Toxic this Gorgeist, 100%. Like, that is what the thing wants to do. Um, but she can't do it because I'm already poisoned. It's, it's a lesser poison. It does less damage than Toxic overall. But because that's what I'm uh, infected with, like, there's no logic in the machine to be like, oh, that's less effective poison. It's just, it's all just poison. Um, so yeah, Nuit the Chance he's going to come back in favor of Echo the Mega Metacham, switching back in fresh and getting hit once again with the Leech Seeds. Echo at this point is is ticking down pretty low, pretty, pretty low. Um, it's going to take a Shadow Sneak, and that is going to be all she wrote for the Mega Metacham. Uh, pretty thoroughly neutralized by our pumpkin friend here. Um, pumpkin Spice has been incredible overall in the series. Like, like zero complaints. Um, yeah, like, just really, really good overall. 10 out of 10. Would recommend I mean, at this point, we do see Boss the Heracross come out for Annabelle. And it does have Shadow Claw, um, which helps it to deal some pretty significant damage to Pumpkin Spice, but not enough to KO it. However, unfortunately, the, the Will-O-Wisp on the return misses, uh, which just, just sucks, frankly. And now I'm in kind of a rough spot, uh, because if I allow Boss to KO anything, then Boss is going to get a Moxie boost, um, and that can get real nasty real quick. Um, we decide to go ahead and go out into Omelet our own Mega Heracross. We should eat that Shadow Claw reasonably well. Yeah, yep, reasonably well. And we do see Boss come out for Annabeth in favor of Fierce the Garchomp. We do get the Mega Evolution off here. We get a Rock Blast off, which, you know, is resisted, but it's still going to do a, a not insignificant chunk of damage off the back of Skill Link Mega Heracross.
Cool. Okay, and we do see SpongeBob come back out here, uh, who's going to eat the attack and go down. Which is going to give us a fresh, clean swap into Ravioli, our own Garchomp. Nice thing is, is because we have now identified that the Choice Scarf is on the Heracross. That means that it's not on the Garchomp, uh, which means that Ravioli can kind of go ham here. Um, and we can just click Dragon Claw. And Fear stays in, the Dragon Claw goes off, and, and Fear goes down. Annabeth is down to two Fremon, somewhere in there. Out comes Boss to Heracross once more. Gonna eat a little bit more damage from Stealth Rocks on the switch in. Two, two Mon, yeah. Just starting to look a little lopsided. My team isn't the, the healthiest, but still starting to look a little lopsided. And we stay in here, we eat a close combat, we live it, we go for a Dragon Claw, and boss goes down as well. And last but not least, we have Nuit the Chansey in the back. We get a big chunk of damage off on Nuit, who's going to seismic toss and bring Ravioli down. Ravioli, great job. You did you did the most work, frankly. Then Omelette's going to come out and clean up. So yeah, a, a really, really decisive win over Annabeth overall this week, which is something that I needed quite a bit, frankly. Um, the last several have been pretty pretty rough um so getting the kicking the week off right to getting a, a great start um but we have one more match and, and of course it is against uh celeste whom we have not beat even once in singles this entire season we've come close a couple times but something has always kept us from it um we'll have to see if we can pull that off this week so stay tuned we are back with our second match of the evening, this time against our good friend Celeste. Um, as you can see, we made a minor roster shakeup for this matchup. Uh, we dropped um, Sashimi, our Gyarados, in favor of Jellybean, our Starmie. Celeste bringing a roster consisting of Jamak, her Greninja, uh, Shiitake, her Breloom, um, Song, her Florges, um, her Garchomp, whose name is currently escaping me, um, Benson, her Mega Charizard, and Starscream, her Skarmory. Uh, we're going to go ahead and lead with Ravioli in this matchup, um, which I think personally makes uh, a whole lot of sense against Celeste. She's shown a desire to lead aggressively with her guard chomp in the past, and I know mine is faster. So let's get this bread, this proverbial bread, as it were. Okay, we see Celeste leading out with Shiitake, the Breloom, which is unfortunately quite possibly the worst lead that she could have chosen uh, up against Ravioli. This is not ideal for me. You know, sometimes the universe gives you mushrooms and you just gotta make stir fry. So we're just gonna hard out into Pumpkin Spice our Gorgeist. Save us pumpkin spice, you are our only hope. Uh, we do bring pumpkin spice out into a mock punch, which is in incredible, frankly. Um, we get the switch off entirely for free, nothing lost whatsoever. And we're just gonna go ahead and go for a leech seed, anticipating the swap, which does come. Um, Shiitake withdraws. 
in favor of Benson the Mega Charizard. Um, so literally ideal. We could have gone for a Will-O-Wisp there, um, but then Benson would have gotten in for free, which would have sucked. Uh, in this case, at least we get the Leech Seed off on him, which gives us recovery and puts him on a timer, which is excellent, frankly. And now we're going to go back into Ravioli, um, thinking that there's no real reason for Celeste to click a dragon move right now, but there's plenty of reason for her to click a fire move, and we resist fire. Um, so that's good. And we do see that Mega Charizard X come off. Big, fat dragon. Literally, Celeste is running a very bulky set, uh, which is pretty wild, but it's been very successful for her. Uh, we do see the Fire Fang come off and deal not very much damage, so so far so good. We are out predicting for the moment. And again, this is one of those situations where I know I'm faster. Um, so if you are Celeste, what do you do here? She stays in, we go for Bulldoze. This is actually a really unfortunate turn because if we'd have gone for Dragon Claw, we would have won 100% of the time. KO'd Benson, uh, we go for Bulldoze, trying to go for a neutral play. Benson lives and gets the Will-O-Wisp off, which is just frustrating. Uh, but sometimes it's like that. Um, the Leech Seed is going to, to pick up our light work and finish off Benson. Again, we could have played that really aggressive. With Dragon Claw, it just would have sucked to let Song get in for free, whereas with Bulldoze, I had a, a reasonable suspicion that I could then turn around and Poison Jab and would have been potentially capable of finishing off the flower. Um, we do see Jamak the Greninja come out, however. And we're just going to hard down into Jelly Bean the Starmer, Starmie. The nice thing is, is at this level, we know that Jamak's only dark moves are physical, um, we know Celeste is running a special set, or at least has been, so we've got reason to suspect that Jamak will not have any dark coverage, and as such, Jelly Bean actually walls it really, really well. Switching into the HP Ice there, resisting it like it's no big deal, taking our lefties recovery. And Jamak is going to come out in favor of Song, the Forges, who's going to switch into a Thunder Wave. You love to see it. And at this point, we decide to be a little bit reckless um, because there's very little reason for Song to just go like straight into Moonblast. Like she might aromatherapy here, which which she does. She might be fully paralyzed. She might go for a wish. But the odds of her just going straight for a Moonblast are pretty low. Um, so here we go into Ravioli, um, just hoping to get some pressure on despite the burn, which is very unfortunate here. Uh, we do see Celeste go for a Protect, trying to scout out what our plans are here. And we're going to pull Ravioli back in favor of Jellybean once more. And Song also comes back in favor of Starscream the Skarmory. Starscream's going to come back once more in favor of Song once again. Who's going to switch into a T-Bolt. And we land an another T-Wave. Paralyzing Gorgeous. Um... 
who is then fully paralyzed and cannot move, which is really, really important. Like, we really need to kind of waste a turn or two for this thing um, so that we can get up and roll it. Okay, and now we're going to go ahead and send out Omelette, our Heracross, who switches out on the Aromatherapy, which is, is fine, primarily. And we're going to go ahead and go for a substitute here. Um, kind of actually anticipating the swap there, which is very, very good. We go ahead and get our sub off. We mega evolve and we get behind it all. Now we can sit there and launch a Rock Blast. Which even against Skarmory's physical defense is going to hurt. At least a little bit. <sighs> we do see a Brave Bird come out of Starscream. <laughs> Which is going to be plenty to break the sub. Unfortunately, that's not half damage, so I can't just go for another Rock Blast and trust it. I'll finish him off. So I've got to come up with something else. And at this point, we're just kind of waffling, trying to figure out what exactly our play is, and ultimately we settled that the play is to go back into Jelly Bean. And Starscream goes for Roost, which is just incredibly unfortunate. <clears throat> See Starscream come back in favor of Song of Forges once more, who is once more switching into a Thunder Wave. All the paralysis. Song will be paralyzed. And we do see SpongeBob coming out here as Song is fully paralyzed. And this is th this is definitely the opening we're looking for. We're just gonna go ahead and nasty plot up. A song protects. Let's go. And we're going to go for a second nasty plot here, which in hindsight I think was actually greedy. I think I probably should have just gone ahead and gone for the air slash. I, I made one critical mental error um, in this sequence. And we'll talk about it in a second. Um, Song's going to come back in favor of Starscream. As we reach plus four with our second nasty plot. So this turn right here, this is the reason why I should have gone for Air Slash instead of that second Nasty Plot, because we are going to Aura Sphere here. It is going to hit and do a ton of damage, and Starscream is going to live on one because Starscream has 30. Um, I should have remembered that and recognized that that was a likely switch in. Um, Air Slashing on the previous turn would have broken the 30 and, and allowed us to actually secure a sweep there. But instead, unfortunately, uh, we are forced out. But the, the good news... The good news is Starscream is nearly dead. Um, Song has been forced to retreat while still paralyzed and thus was not able to uh, cleric that status away. Um, this is far from a bad scenario. Um, we do see our Mega Heracross forced out and with a single hit of a pin missile, Starscream is down.
And we do see Jamak, the Greninja, coming out for Celeste. And we do take an extra sensory, which does a ton of damage, but is not enough to finish Omelette off. And Omelette is going to land a big close combat, which is enough to bring Jamak down. And we do see Shiitake, the Breloom, coming out for Celeste. Omelette's almost dead, but there's still a lot of value to be had in it, especially because Shiitake's almost certainly going for a Mach Punch this turn. How do you justify going for anything else? We're just going to go Pumpkin Spice here. And we are going to Frisk and find its Life Orb, which is useful. We do see the Mach Punch, uh, and we immune it. So Pumpkin Spice definitely putting in work. And we hard back out into SpongeBob here, um, which this is another turn that winds up being a mistake. I just trusted that Celeste was not going to stay in and allow Shiitake to get burned. Um, instead, she goes for a Swords Dance. So if I had gone for Willowist that turn, it would have just neutralized each other. But because I hard swapped, this is just a plus two Breloom, which is a p -p 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 problem. Um, we're going to go ahead and just go for a, a hard air slash, um, but Shiitake is faster. Gets a Rock Tomb off, and that's going to be plenty. To deal with your boy Spongebob. Rip in peace, Spongebob. You deserve the sweep there. It's a crime you didn't get it. Um, we do see Pumpkin Spice coming back out for me. Now it is going to get a free, a free swing at plus two, which is unfort, before I'm able to land a Will-O-Wisp, uh, except Celeste withdraws it. So it gets some funny decision making on, on the part of Celeste. I really can't can't explain why she made the, the moves in sequence that she did um, but this is what she did and we're gonna go ahead and just go out to ravioli here and ravioli eats the moon blast and is done um, which is fine, actually, because um, that's going to let us get Omelette in for free, and Omelette can do big damage, or Optimus for that matter, but no, we do opt to go for, for Omelette, which I think is a good play. And we go for the Rock Blast here, which I think is definitely our best neutral play. So well done there. Still, unfortunately, does not deal a ton of damage. Florgus is just so outrageously fat. Um, does over 50%, though, which is something. Um, we do see another Moonblast go off. Um, God, if we'd had a full, par a full pair there, that would have been epic. Omelette could have just gone off, um, but such is life. Down goes Omelette. But overall, it feels like we're in a, a really strong position here. We're able to bring out full health Optimus with Song at, at half health and Paralyze. And Song is going to come back uh, for Celeste in favor of Rex, her Garchomp. He's going to switch in on a Stealth Rock. So we called the swap there. That was pretty cool. We're just going to hard back out the pumpkin spice. And Rex is, is scope lens, which is pretty interesting. Uh, that's going to bulldoze off, which does not do really anything to pumpkin spice. We go ahead and go for a leaf seed here, just on the off chance the song comes back out, which is a very real possibility. And sure enough, here she is. Song comes back out, 
takes the stealth rocks damage. And then it's going to take the leech seed damage as well. And now this turn, we're going to go ahead and stay in and go for a seed bomb, um, which should be enough to finish Song off. And unfortunately, it is not, uh, but it in, in combination with the Leech Seed will, which is very good. Or, yes? Yes, okay, I was getting nervous for a second. Down goes Song, and, and with it, the, the, the last remaining bit of Celeste's defense before in this matchup. Um, out comes Shiitake the Breloom once more. Nothing she has left really wants to come out into Pumpkin Spice. Um, we're going to go ahead and burn Shiitake. And we're going to go ahead and shadow sneak. Um, which does a, a decently respectable amount of damage. Um, Celeste goes for another sword stance. So now she's at like 1.25 or 1.5, I, I believe. Like, like not even, yeah, not even quite plus one, I believe is how burn works with, with sword stances. Um, again, burn is an incredible here in keeping this thing under control. We go for a second shadow sneak which crits, and then on the same turn, the Rock Tomb from Sataki misses. And this is a turn that I know made Celeste like bitter down to her bones. I, I still maintain that it did not super matter. Um, there is literally, literally no way that that like 1.25 times Rock Tomb was going to do enough damage to Pumpkin Spice for that to have been a meaningful miss. It's just not. Uh, I, get, I get how that feels. It's like I'm already behind. And then I get crit and I miss, like, what the fuck? But also, like, it really did not functionally matter. I don't believe. Finally, Celeste is all down to Rex. Who goes for a poison jab, which does almost nothing. We're going to get the Will-O-Wisp off. And now it's just a matter of time. All right, Rex goes for Crunch. I really don't know why Celeste went for the Poison Jab on the first turn if she was packing Crunch. Like, that is an absolute head-scratcher to me. Um, but, you know, sometimes it'd be like that. We do get the Leech Seed off. Yeah, between burn and leech seed, we're doing a pretty significant chunk of uh, ticking damage at the end of the turn. We're going to go for a seed bomb here. See our ticking damage go off. And at this point, I should be within Shadow Sneak range. And that's going to be that. Um, so, yeah, guys, for the first time this series in, in singles, we're able to pull off the double dub, um, the big, big weak, uh, weak sweep. Uh, you love to see it. Um, there's a lot of factors there, honestly, um, not the least of which being gelato that, that we don't have 
that uh, that good pig on the team eating up that slot that we we can't do anything with. Um, but yeah, like like shout out to the team. Um, we've got we've put together a really really powerful um, and diverse team here. I'm really looking forward to bringing it on as we finish up the series and head into uh, the final gym chapter this week. I hope you guys are excited for that. I know I am. Um, but I am exhausted, so I'm going to get out of here, guys. Uh, thank you so much for watching. As always, I have been Jolly by Nature, and I will see you next time. Hey, what's up, everybody? You made it to the end of the video. That is so awesome. Thank you so much for spending some time with us. Um, be sure to click the like and subscribe buttons so you stay up to date on what I and my co-hosts are doing right here on the Blastburn Radio YouTube page. Also, be sure to check out Blastburn Radio Podcast, which is available wherever fine pods are casted, as well as at our website down below at BlastburnRadio.com. Uh, but yeah, we'll be back next time, and I hope to see you there. Take care.